Hello everyone, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. We have quite a complex experiment to do today, quite an elaborate setup as I'm sure you've noticed. However, I'm going to start out this video with a little description of why we're making it in the first place. I have a video on my channel called Making Sulfuric Acid from Epsom Salt. You might be aware of it because at the time of filming this video, it is the most popular video on my channel. Since I made it, it has consistently gained more views than any other video on the Scrap Science channel. By the time this video is uploaded, it may have even reached 100,000 views. Now, while I'm very happy with that and the amount of views that it has gained over time, of course, views are always good and having a lot of people interested in what I'm doing is a nice feeling. However, I'm really not proud of that video. I made it all the way back in high school when I didn't really have all that much chemistry knowledge and while the process does work in converting Epsom salts to sulfuric acid, it's just about the most inefficient method conceivable. It generates really dilute, very impure sulfuric acid with a lot of work um, for not much product. I was pleased with it at the time because, well, I was really excited to have any of my experiments work. But at this stage, I think we can do better. So this video is going to act as the start of a kind of renewed project for making sulfuric acid that I think might be a little bit more efficient and a little bit more effective. The idea here is to take starting material of sulfur, so very cheap, very easily obtainable, burn it to produce sulfur dioxide, and then oxidize the sulfur dioxide into sulfuric acid. It's pretty simple in theory, and in fact, it's exactly what's done in industry to produce sulfuric acid. In industry, what they do is just use atmospheric oxygen. Um, that's a little bit tricky on a home scale because um, the reaction between sulfur dioxide and oxygen requires um, quite fancy catalysts and some quite extreme conditions. So instead we have to look for some other options of oxidizing it. Um, a lot of people have put a fair amount of work into this and come up with a few options for the oxidizing agents that are capable of doing this. Hydrogen peroxide is a classic that a lot of people have tried and this works really well. And even something as simple as copper two salts will do the job as well. Now, I don't really like the idea of using hydrogen peroxide um, simply because it's really expensive for me to get hold of. And I also don't really like um, transition metal oxidizers simply because um, they end up contaminating the solution um, that you end up with the sulfuric acid at the end. So in this video, what I'd like to investigate is can we use electricity in the form of electrolysis to do the oxidation of sulfur dioxide to sulfuric acid? If we can get anything remotely promising in these results, I want to come back to this in a future project because I've got uh, quite a few ideas as to how we can make this um, quite a nice setup. For now, we've got a super dodgy setup um, just to see if it works at all. Anyway, I'll talk you through the setup and the reaction right now and then we can get started. First of all, I've got an aspirator vacuum pump hooked up to this whole system. So what happens is we start sucking gas through our pump and it kind of pulls gas all the way through the system, all right? Just so everything makes sense from the start. At the very beginning, um, we have this stainless steel cup, which we will use to burn sulfur to produce the sulfur dioxide, and it will get sucked in by this inverted funnel and enter the system like that. First of all, it enters this glass pipe here, which has a little bit of cotton wool in it to catch any unburned sulfur that might end up in the tube. From here, the gas goes over and into this round bottom flask. And you can't really see in there because it's a really hot day and it's all evaporating. But um, that gas goes straight into the lower liquid there, which I have filled with 4% sulfuric acid solution. I know it seems a little bit weird to require sulfuric acid in order to make sulfuric acid, but what we're gonna be trying to measure is an increase in the sulfuric acid concentration. The gas will end up in there. I've got two electrodes also. You can't really see a platinum anode and a copper cathode. And also I've got it hooked up to stirring as well so we can get all that stirred as it runs. From there, any unreacted sulfur dioxide will end up in this tube here, um, end up in this gas washing bottle which is filled with a sodium hydroxide solution um, which will catch all of the sulfur dioxide and then that just gets led to the pump, as I said before. If we turn the pump on, you can see all the gas 
running through the system right now. And I'm also in here. The basic plan is to just leave the electrolysis running. Um, the electrodes um, should handle the electrolysis of sulfuric acid perfectly fine. And then every now and again, we'll burn a bit of sulfur. A little bit of the sulfur dioxide will dissolve into the solution there and hopefully be electrolyzed. And then we'll take that solution out and see if we can get any measurable difference in the sulfuric acid concentration. But really all we're trying to do is just get any indication that this process can work at which point we will try improving it in future videos. And there we are, I've got electrolysis running. I'm gonna to try to run an amp through um, the cell constantly for I think four hours. And then I've got in here two and a half grams of sulfur um, to start us off. Very important as well, sulfur dioxide is a very toxic gas. So I'm gonna be wearing a gas mask as I light the sulfur and as it flows through the system. But with that, we can get started. All right, first attempt was a bit of a fail. Um, I couldn't keep the sulfur lit, so we didn't end up generating really all that much sulfur dioxide. I don't really know why I thought that this would be a good idea, generating sulfur dioxide by burning sulfur. I have all the stuff to make a sulfur dioxide generator using an acid and sodium metabisulfite. So I think I'm gonna retry this tomorrow. I'll put myself together a sulfur dioxide generator that's a little bit more reliable. Um, and I think that might actually simplify the process a whole lot because we won't need a vacuum on the other end. Okay, now with a much more sensible setup, I have a sulfur dioxide generator set up over here. Um, we'll just be dripping some hydrochloric acid onto some sodium metabisulfite. And I've got enough material here to make about 20 grams of sulfur dioxide, which we're going to pass through the system slowly over the course of four hours. I've also got the electrolysis running at exactly one amp. You can see the gas generated on the copper cathode and the platinum anode there. Pretty easy to spot there. Um, we've also got stirring. I don't think you can really see that in the round bottom flask there, but everything's being stirred. And with everything ready to go, I'm gonna put my mask on and we'll start generating sulfur dioxide. Just gonna add one small burst of sulfur dioxide at the start to get things going, and then we'll add it very slowly beyond that point. After passing just a little bit of sulfur dioxide through our sulfuric acid solution, um, you can see that the color has turned a distinct yellow. Um, I might even go so far as to say that's orange. What I think that's due to is the fact that sulfur dioxide is not only electrolytically active on the anode, the oxidation reaction, but it can also be reduced on the cathode back to elemental sulfur. And I think that yellow orangey color is exactly what we're seeing in there. 
Now, obviously this is a, an issue with this process. Um, we don't wanna just fill our sulfuric acid solution with sulfur rather than just make sulfuric acid. So this is something that we can definitely work towards minimizing or preventing entirely in future videos. For now, I'm gonna keep electrolyzing and I'm gonna keep passing sulfur dioxide through the solution. Very annoying. I left this for like two minutes and it's all sucked back into the sulfur dioxide generator. Um, even all the way from the gas scrubber, the electrolysis cell, it's all sucked into that flask. Always very annoying. Um, ruins a few hours of work, but we'll have another go tomorrow, I suppose. All right, third time lucky. We've got the power connected, electrolysis running, stirring is going on, and I'm about to add the sulfur dioxide. I should really have like a, a dead space flask somewhere in the line um, to stop suck back from happening again, but I think if I keep an eye on it closely enough, um, I'm gonna risk it. Um, also because I don't actually have the necessary glassware for that. Anyway, away we go. After a little over an hour of electrolysis, our solution has become completely opaque, um, no doubt due to the elemental sulfur that we're forming on the cathode, filling the solution. Change of plan a little bit. Um, as I said just before, I was gonna run this for four hours, but now that around two hours of electrolysis has passed, I'm kind of running out of sulfur dioxide to actually pass through the system. And so I think what I'll do is just end the experiment here um, two hours of electrolysis should have been enough to generate a measurable quantity of sulfuric acid if it did work. So I'm going to pack this up and we'll see what we've got. And there it is, our solution after electrolysis and simultaneous sulfur dioxide injection. Um, as we noted before, there's a lot of sulfur in it, but overnight that seems to have settled out and I will be filtering it off in a sec. Additionally, we have uh, the cathode right here. I don't know if that really comes up, but it's kind of blackened. The copper wire there has been coated in some kind of black film. Not sure what it is. Um, it still seemed to be conductive and allowed for the electrolysis to proceed, but definitely not a problem. And then of course we have the platinum anode and platinum being the magical metal that it is. 
um, really hasn't changed at all. Despite running an entire amp through that surface area there for two hours, it seems fine. And before we can actually measure um, the actual concentration of the sulfuric acid that we now have in this solution, we're going to need to filter it, get rid of all of that solid sulfur in there, and then we're going to have to boil it to make sure that there's no excess dissolved sulfur dioxide that might interfere with our measurements. And there we have it, filtered, boiled, and then diluted back to its original volume of 100 millilitres. Of course, we need to return it to 100 millilitres because um, otherwise it's going to throw off our concentration measurements that we're about to do. All we've got to do now to check whether this has worked is titrate this solution um, to measure the concentration of the acid and compare it with the measurement from this sample, which is some of the sulfuric acid solution that we didn't put through the process. Anyway, titration time, I suppose. Alrighty, titration complete, and I'm not going to lie to you, the results are pretty bad. I mean, I was expecting them to be a little bit bad, but they were terrible, honestly. We started our electrolysis with a solution of 4% sulfuric acid, and after um, those hours of electrolysis that we subjected the solution to with sulfur dioxide flowing through it, we turned that into 4.2% sulfuric acid. While it is definitely a measurable change in the concentration of this solution, um, as I said, it's pretty terrible. In fact, it's such a small change in concentration that I'm a little bit worried that the increase in acidity might just be due to some effect of the sulfur dioxide running through um, the sulfuric acid solution. What I think I'm going to have to do is a control test. So I'm thinking I'll set up another experiment with a very similar solution of sulfuric acid and bubble sulfur dioxide through it without electrolysis. And if we see this same effect, this same increase in concentration, then we know that the electrolysis isn't doing anything. But if we see that the solution doesn't change in concentration without electrolysis, then we can be somewhat confident that the electrolysis is actually doing something, actually generating sulfuric acid. It might be doing it very inefficiently right now, but that will give us the evidence that we need to you know, improve upon this process uh, because I definitely have a few ideas that I think will make this much, much more efficient and much, much more usable. I'm not going to bore you with the actual details of the control test. We've got our sulfur dioxide generator. We've got our sulfuric acid to bubble it through. What we're really looking for is the acid concentration over here to not increase at all after we boil the solution at the end. And as it all turns out, the results are not good for our control test. In fact, the concentration of acid in our control test actually increased significantly more than it did in our actual electrolysis run. Quite confusing, but what I think happened was the fault of our sulfur dioxide generator. All right, we were using hydrochloric acid and sodium metabisulfite. And because we were using this particular method of generating sulfur dioxide, I think some hydrochloric acid possibly vaporized in our gas generator and entered and dissolved into our sulfuric acid solution. I think that is the culprit um, for why the acid concentration increased in both of our tests, and I don't think electrolysis actually had anything to do with it. So very disappointing. Um, it turns out that the only thing we really discovered today was that if you electrolyze a solution of sulfuric acid with sulfur dioxide bubbling through it, 
you can turn a small amount of the sulfur dioxide into elemental sulfur on the cathode. That's that there. Kind of an interesting result, but definitely, definitely not a useful one. I do really think that the reaction is doable. Um, since there's a lot of literature online that claims the reaction can be done. However, our terrible setup um, just isn't good enough to get it done. Um, the low solubility of sulfur dioxide in um, water, especially in acidic conditions, um, doesn't help us at all either. If we did get any good results today, um, I would have actually kind of tried to improve the cell in the future. Um, I was going to get out my super fancy piece of naphion membrane. This is an ion exchange membrane um, specifically for electrolysis projects um, where we need to separate very nicely um, the anode and the cathode reactions. I thought this would be really nice for a project like this because then we could avoid um, the inefficiency that comes from reducing the sulfur dioxide on the cathode to elemental sulfur and we could also set up like an anode chamber where we could completely flood the chamber with pure sulfur dioxide. But the results were so terrible today that I really just don't think it's worth it. I mean, if there's a lot of interest in the comments um, for trying to make this reaction work, maybe I'll have a go, but at this point, I really think it's not worth our time. Ah, well, if you think about it, most of the experiments we do on this channel do end up working, and we can't win them all, so we'll just have to move on to something different next time. See you later.